Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. All right, this is gonna be my review about the Ziyun Crane 3 and how it actually works in the real world. I, I took it out on an event, I shot the event, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts, my review, and my feelings about the Ziyun Crane 3. But first things first, let me show you how to set this thing up. I know you guys probably seen a lot of unboxings, so I'm not gonna to talk too much about it. I got the master package. Uh, which is basically the creator's package along with the backpack. I think you guys already know that. So I'm gonna put it together real quick. I'm gonna show you a few little shortcuts that I use for myself personally that really help me out in the field using this unit. And uh, so yeah, let's get to it, let's put it together. Okay, so one of the cool things is there's actually not a lot to setting up and balancing this gimbal. It's actually the easiest gimbal that I've ever used as far as balancing is concerned. So you got your tripod base, you've got the entire unit locked up so it doesn't swing and wiggle around everywhere. It's all locked up using these nice little red locks right here. I think that's in focus, hope it's, yeah it is, there you go. Okay, so these, using these little, so everything is locked up into kind of like an, of an L shape, okay? So, and then of course, you have your base plate. I got the cables coming out of it and I got the two motors connected. I just, you know, it's shorter. You guys have seen a lot of these videos, but I'm gonna give you, again, just showing you what comes with it and how it attaches. Now, the interesting thing is, remember I told you guys there was a little shortcut that I've used for, uh, for myself personally. I've added an Arca Swiss base, so I can just slide my camera on and off really easily, really easy. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in a little bit, but to show you how easy it is to slide on. That's it, camera's on, it's on the plate. All I gotta do is pop the plate right into the gimbal and then we're good to go, ready to go, okay? So let me just take this off so I can show you how I balance this gimbal. <clears throat> so, you got two quick release levers here, okay? You got the quick release piece that attaches to the quick release plate, okay? Pull down, pops in, pops out, okay? So I'm gonna connect these right here very easy, just pull this down, okay? Pull down on it and good to go, that's it. Now it has a place to stand, just like that. Now we're gonna put the camera on with the plate. So, show you a few things about the plate here. Okay, so there's a little, little lever here that goes left to right, right to left. This is how you lock in, you put the slide your plate right in and then lock it right into place. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna unlock this thing. So put that one switch down, okay? Starts to swing. All right, then we have another switch right here. Okay, so we're gonna press this down. Oh, or up, yep, there we go. Now we got some swinging motion going on. Okay, now I'm gonna lock them back, okay? So, where are you? Where are you get? There you go. Okay, now it's locked again. Why did I do that? I did that so that way I could put the plate back in and then put the camera on and I can balance it that much easier. If, you, if you're able to lock the gimbal and then begin to balance it, it makes your life way easier. For those of you who use gimbals out there, you know what I'm talking about. It's really hard when you're on the go, on the run, and you're trying to balance the gimbals, and then uh, you're doing it with one hand and the other hand, and then you have a camera. You know how it is. Okay, as soon as you slide it in, you're gonna hear that little clicking sound. That little clicking sound means it's locked in safely. Now, you take this little lever right here, and you swing it in. And you just push it in a little bit harder, and you're good to go. Okay, so now it's locked in, the base is locked in. This whole gimbal is still locked together, so we still didn't put the camera on. Hooking up the camera. Now this camera has quite a payload on it. It's pretty heavy. I'm using the a7 III with the 24, uh, 24 to 70 G Master on it, so it's a pretty heavy camera. And so I did not have any trouble with this gimbal. This gimbal carries pretty good, pretty good amount of weight, and let's put it on. These straps are for pulling focus and zooming in and out using the motors that are on the gimbal. Okay, so again, now back to my shortcut here. Okay, 
So there's a plate on the bottom, Arca Swiss plate, as you guys can see right there. And all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put this guy right here, and I'm gonna slide it right in. Just like that. And just by tightening it up right here, you are good to go, my friend. Boom, you're locked in. Okay, quick release plates. They really save you a lot of time. They really, really save you a lot of time. So it's, it's for me, I, again, I use Arca Swiss. You can use whatever plate you want. It's just, you know, keeping the plate, the base of the uh, gimbal attached and marked, balanced, and just removing the camera from the plate is a really big help. So, okay, moving on. So if you notice one thing here, when I slid the camera on, the gears are not touching. So if you notice here, the gears are not touching and I did that purposely so I could show you how I connect the gears on. So the, obviously the gear, the main gear motor is already connected, but the gears right here, there's a little gap here. So when I slid my camera in there, okay, let's, let's slide it just back out a little bit. All right, okay. So when you're sliding the camera in, and then you got it at your, at your maximum point or wherever you see fit, wherever you see it's balanced. Okay, you got a little gap there. Okay, so to me, this is the center. This is the most center part, All right? I'm gonna loosen this motor up right here. All right, and then I'm just gonna push it towards the gears to where they fit. It's not too hard. Don't push too hard to where it looks like it's gonna break. And then I'm just gonna tighten these little levers right here. Okay, then I'm gonna take this cable, and I don't know if you're in focus here. I'm gonna take this cable, and I am going to bring that right down here, just like, just like that. Okay, so right now, that's all locked in. Cable's in there, the gears are on right, and we're good to go on this side. Now connecting the second motor is just as easy. You've already done it once, so doing it the second time is just gonna make it easier. So we're gonna loosen this little lever right here, bring the motor up, make sure that it's the gears are touching and their teeth are right within one another. Okay, and then you just spin, tighten this right here. Then you take your cable, that USB-C type cable, okay, and then you just plug it right in down here. And you just plug it in just like, just like that. Simple click, good to go. Now, both motors are all connected and both motors are ready to roll. Okay, now that you have everything connected, now it's time to balance the gimbal. You wanna make sure that you have your, your um, you wanna make sure that you have your motors on, you wanna make sure that you have your cables on, your straps, anything that you wanna add on to the camera, you wanna add it on now, before you start balancing, just because if you add these things on afterwards, you will throw off the balance. This is not balanced at all. So it's just put together and everything was locked into place. So if I was to release this lever right here, see how it tipped all the way down? So had I turned the gimbal on now and started to operate it, it would not be safe for the gimbal. It'll tell you after a little while that it's uh, either overheating or it needs to cool down. Okay, so now that the we've unlocked it, let's make some minor adjustments. So first we wanna start with making sure this thing sits right. So we wanna be shooting at 24, so I'm gonna make sure my focal length is already at 24, and I'm gonna keep pushing back until this thing sits straight at first. And seems to be okay there, a little bit rocky. Okay, oh, remember a little fine, I think we're okay right there, okay. All right, that looks good right about there. So focal length is at 24. This is a 24 to 70, so my focal length is at 24. And uh, we're all good right there. All right, so now I wanna make sure. Okay, so it looks like it must have been balanced before over here, but if it wasn't, I would loosen this part right here. And I would slide back and forth until I get that nice balance right in the middle. So we're doing that right now. Okay, just tip the little back a little bit. So just a little bit more and a little bit. 
Uh, almost got it. Boom, just like that. So, screw this bag down. All right, back in business. Okay, we're good to go. So, now another part we want to adjust is this back axis right here, back motor. Okay, so, loosen that right there. And if I drop this, so it's kind of somewhat balanced. I guess from the last run that I did. All right, so I'm gonna just, it looks like it's leaning a little bit to the right. So if you notice, it's still the swing right here on it. It's still swinging down to the right, my right at least over here. Okay, so if I want it straight in the middle, uh, it looks like I'm just gonna push in a little bit more and good to go. Okay, so tighten that. All right, this is good. Now, there's one lock that I always forget to turn off. And that's this lock right down here. So once you have the gimbal all balanced and ready to go, you just need to press the power button right over here. Okay, you hold your finger on it, it flashes, and then you remove it, it turns red, it turns blue, and you are good to go. Now what's cool about this gimbal is this unique handle that it has. Okay, so you can actually, you have the entire remote section right here. The way the handles are built, so you could actually hold it in a very unique or underslung way, I guess you could, you could say. So you could, uh, you know, you could tilt it forward, down and under and hold it like a briefcase. This is how you would pull focus. Okay, I'm spinning the wheel and the gears are turning, which is pretty cool to have on a gimbal. Very, very convenient. Pulling focus like a professional is easily done on this gimbal. So here's what we do with the zoom. Press the button right here and we're in business. So that's about it. That's how easy it is to assemble, put together, and to use the motors that are on it. Pretty easy gimbal to use. And I'm gonna show you, uh, when I was using this actually, I at the event that I was using, I, I had the, um, had the monopod hooked up to it. When I had the monopod hooked up, it caught a lot of attention because one of the production companies that were on site, because uh, you know they're they're on the ground using regular shots, and I got the monopod high up in the air, giving crane-like shots. So which is pretty cool. I was pretty much above the entire crowd. That was a very convenient feature, and popping it on and off is as simple as pulling down the lock switch and slapping it right onto the monopod and made it really easy to get my, get the work done. Uh, another thing that I connected with this unit, which I'll show you guys in the next video, uh, is the uh, Ninja 5, the, the Atomos Ninja 5. So this is what was connected to it. I'm gonna do a review on this next time and I'm gonna show you how it works with this guy right here. Angel Bird 1TB came in super handy. We'll talk about that later though. Thanks for tagging along. Appreciate it. If you guys like what I did right here, for me to do more, I really need your support, need your help. So if you can like and comment down in the comment section down below if you have any questions at all. And if you can, please subscribe and hit that bell. It would really mean a lot. Thanks again for your time and catch you guys on the next one. See you.